Hey, Scott from MyGrowthRings.com. Here, here once again is in my sister's basement, and we're here to talk about saw guards. So don't rush away. Don't rush away. Specifically about the saw guards used on a Shopsmith Mark V since about the nineteen since about nineteen eighty five, um, when the introduction of the Mark V model five ten happened. One of the things that changed was the way the saw guards function, and they really do function. They function well when properly installed and properly aligned. The great news is the alignment is more or less a one-time thing, and they're quick and easy to install and remove. Very, very cleverly designed, and best of all, they were designed to be compatible with your shop vacuum or with a dust collector. So in this video, we're gonna talk about those features. Here's the downside. Previous models of Shopsmith tools did not have great guards. Those guards, if you use them, certainly might keep your fingers out of the blade, but they didn't channel sawdust well. They weren't designed really for that. And uh, unfortunately, they often got in the way. So my advice, if you happen to have one of those earlier models, is you might look at the most recent version of that guard that was produced by Shopsmith, probably up until the mid 2000s. You might still find them on eBay, and uh, I'll put a link in the shop notes that might help you locate those. For sure, what you want to look for, though, is one that has the two and a quarter inch dust port on the back. If you see a one inch port, you're not looking at the best of those ineffective saw guards. All right, we're going to start with everything off of the machine. Uh, first thing to point out to you here is I am unplugged. Anytime I'm messing around with the guards or with the blade, I'm certainly going to do that. Now, the problem with filming this is I'm in the way half of the shot. So let's just do our best here. So this is the lower saw guard for the Shopsmith Model 520 that I'm using here in the shop, but it is the exact same guard used on the 510, the 505, and the Mark 7. Let's explore this a moment before we put it on. And by the way, I do store whatever saw blade I'm using, and this is sort of an all-purpose, uh, all-weather tire from Shopsmith, thin curve blade that uh, works really well, 40 tooth blade. I just leave it right there on the arbor down inside of the, the guard, and that way I can remove it and put it on kind of as one. So some of the features of this lower saw guard, um, it does have a part that moves up and down as the table is lowered and raised. That keeps the blade covered regardless of where the table is positioned. Um, it has a, a clamp, if you will, that goes around the quill, the portion of the quill that is not spinning. Um, and there is a often missed set screw or cap screw here that is used for aligning your upper saw guard. Oh my gosh, so many people miss that and have to futz around to get their saw guards aligned. This is one of the beauties of the 510 design. Back here, we have a clamp. What is that clamp for? Well, that is where our upper saw guard riving knife, the riving knife is like the splitter on a typical table saw, um, but a riving knife goes directly behind the blade. When our blade is on the machine, it'll be right about there, and it's always at that distance, no matter what height uh, the table is adjusted. It will go through the table slot with that riving knife, drop it all the way down, and then we will tighten that wing nut, and that'll hold that firmly in place. I'm calling it a wing nut, it's not a wing nut, but you know what I mean. The bottom half of this guard opens and closes. You can see that there is a, a knurled knob over on this end and a knurled knob on this end, which is at the front of the table normally. And that allows us to open and close this guard. We open and close it sometimes when it's on the machine in order to make it easier to remove the blade, to replace it with a dado or molder blade. Um, but also for dust collection, if you're using a shop vacuum, it'll work best if you pull this thing completely tight. If you're using a dust collector, they work better if you open it up. We don't open it up all the way as we install it. So I'm gonna start with that chute partially closed and we'll just insert this right onto the end of our quill. And you'll notice I'm feeding both the saw arbor on at the same time as the saw guard. There's a split right here in this little clamp portion. That split more or less lines up with the center ridge on your Shopsmith headstock. And then we'll tighten that with our toolbox, Shopsmith toolbox. Now, you'll notice on mine, there's a little bit of a gap here. 
that's because of that set screw or that cap screw that I've adjusted to get my riving knife aligned with my blade. I, I can check that right now without even lowering a table in place. I can just put my riving knife on here, tighten that in place, and I can check to see whether that is flush with the blade or not. And if I need to move that riving knife inward, that means I have to drive the set screw in. That'll allow me to slide the entire guard to the left. If I need to move the riving knife to the right, that means I'll back that little set screw out and that will force this to line that way. So a very simple one-time adjustment and it, it'll align with your blades then. Um, this has to be off though in order to lower our table in place. Here's also a spot that occasionally needs some wax or some spray lubricant. I would uh, recommend a dry lubricant for that just so this moves easily. Noticing it's getting snagged right here. That's an indication to me that it needs a little bit of lubrication. Let's take care of that right now. A couple products I use for this. This one in particular I like. Goes on wet and then dries with only a mild waxy residue. All right, now we're going to move our either our carriage over the table or we could slide our headstock under the table, whichever the case may be. And we're going to drop this down until the blade is exposed. Now, this is probably a great time to run through our five point safety check again. Uh, I'll link to that in the, uh, that video in the shop notes. But basically what we're going to do is we're going to go around the dial, making sure our table is tilted properly uh, or level, that our carriage is locked, that our depth is locked, that our headstock is locked, and that our quill is locked. Don't want any surprises there. And then we're going to lower the saw guard down through the slot and into that clamp. We'll take this, drop it down through the guard, into the clamp, all a little bit. So if I'm using a dust collector, I'm gonna loosen those neural knobs and slide that open. So you see we're getting a nice, relatively tight seal against that tie bar guard. If I'm using a shop vacuum, I'm gonna close that tight towards the blade, and then lock those neural knobs in tight. For me, I'm gonna open that up because I'm using a dust collector. Now there is a plastic shield here that may be missing from your machine. It's held in place with two cap screws. It's really important because without that, it exposes you potentially to the saw blade and exposes the shop to the dust produced by the saw blade. Let's pull that cover off. And you'll see how much of the blade we would be exposing if we didn't have that guard in place. You see the top half of the blade is completely exposed there. Now, if you purchase your shops and the tools secondhand, there's a chance that the previous owner bent this riving knife in order to get it aligned with the blade. I did purchase mine secondhand, and I know there, there is quite a, quite a number of bends in mine. That, that's completely unnecessary. Uh, this should be straight and, and can be made straight. And once it is straight, when we put this riving knife down into the guard and clamp it in place, that should be ever so slightly behind the, the teeth. Meaning, if I run my finger across the teeth or a straight edge across the teeth, I shouldn't run into the edge of the riving knife here at the back, and I am. So that tells me this guard is sticking a little bit too far out, which is why that screw was sticking a little too far out. If I run that screw inbound, let's do this right now, and this does take a little, little bit of back and forth in here, but we're going to take that screw right there, and in my case, I need to run it in a little bit. How much? About the amount that the riving knife was sticking beyond the edge of the teeth. So now I'll check that again. Okay, now the riving knife is to the left of this edge, but let's check it from over on this side. Over here, it's just about perfectly flush. 
So really, if anything, maybe I still need to move the riving knife just a tad to the right. So again, to do that, I'm going to take my, take my blade and the guard off. And in order to move this entire guard and the entire riving knife to the right, this is independent of the blade, mind you, I'm going to move this slightly counterclockwise. That is going to make it extend out a little bit. And then when I tighten that against the quill, we're going to tighten our blade in place. Again, I should not feel the riving knife sticking out beyond, and I don't. And over on this side, nope, I'm feeling the blade is wider than the riving knife. I'm feeling it on both sides now. So if that's correct, then I can now straighten this because, like I said, it's been bent at some point in the past. I don't know if you're able to see this or not, but the riving knife is quite a bit to the left of the top of that blade. At the bottom, we're, we're looking good. And in fact, it appears to have a slight twist to it. So I think I'm going to give it a twist as well as a bend to the right. A little bit more. Again, hopefully you'll never have to do this. This is, this is really abuse of a tool. I think we're good. Let me demonstrate what will happen if you don't close the guard up before you lower the table. You'll uh, either slide the headstock under your table or you'll slide your table over the headstock. You'll go to lower it down. And it won't go down. And that's because your tie bar to the right of your table is hitting your saw guard. You'll often see these with damage on them. Uh, mine has a little bit of a break in it from the previous owner. Now we're gonna close that up first. Slide our carriage over all the way to our stop. And then that should allow us to drop all the way down to the full depth, at which point we can insert our saw guard. There we go. At that point, we can safely operate the saw. I, I hope my method doesn't vary too much from yours. If it does, I'd be curious to know what you do differently and your thinking behind what you do. But I can tell you this, if you set your Mark V table saw up using this feature, it's gonna work just perfectly for you. I look forward to your questions, comments, and cheap shots. Make it a great week.